Hi ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to explain and show you how registers work. So I'm going to bring up falsetto, head voice, chest voice, chiaroscuro in one system. Hopefully uh, after this lesson you will see, at least understand clearly what is falsetto, what is the head voice, what is the chiaroscuro and what is chest voice, and all the differences and all the nuances. I want to start with the demonstration, I'd like to demonstrate this phrase from Gounod's Faust, Où se devine la présence, that goes to high C. Okay, there I'm going to show you, and hopefully you hear that clear difference in the video. <laughs> Or you do it by switching to a head voice. The camera will equalize the voice, but you can hear the difference in the tempo. So called reinforced falsetto. Sounds like a female voice in a way. And the full voice. First of all, chiaroscuro voice is much stronger, it's meatier. You hear the clear change in the timbre. Some great lyric tenors manipulate with falsetto, they make it more or less even with the rest of the registers. For example, like when you see what you can do is you can bring the previous note to a falsetto note and then it will even up this change. So the break is less obvious here, but nevertheless it doesn't change the, uh, the notion of technique that head voice will never become chiaroscuro voice uh, without a break. Definition of head voice. Head voice is a partial vibration of vocal cords with their full closure. Definition of head falsetto. Head falsetto is a partial vibration of vocal cords without their total closure. Head falsetto can be formed also by raised larynx position that causes the weakest sound possible. Imagine your vocal cords as a guitar string. In order to raise the pitch, one has to shorten the string by pressing down the string on one of the guitar frets. You make the string shorter and by making it shorter you raise the pitch. The difference between guitar production and guitar pitch change and voice change is significant because guitar changes the length of the string, a voice does not change the length of the string. It just simply tunes it like this. So basically what you do when you're singing, you're not manipulating it like in a guitar or piano. No. You're doing this by the, by basically tuning it. When you sing with the same register, you don't use shortening of the chords, shortening of the strings. Only when you change your register, then you do it. These are open strings. And if you want to play higher, even change the key tonality. For example, if you play this phrase, these chords, and you want to play it higher, what you do, you place barre. Okay? Imagine this analogy that you are the guitarist who always plays in this key and it's very 
convenient for you if you place permanently your capo here. Okay, it will be much easier for you to play physically. Okay, but one big shortcoming is you are not able to play the lower notes. Like in voice, it's similar. When you change your register, let's say when you move from chest register to head register, what you basically do from the open, let's say, imagine this is chest, you get into a head voice by shortening your vocal cords. Shortening your vocal cords and then basically doing the tuning. You cannot do the tuning again the way I explained before, like in a guitar. You, you cannot constantly change the length of the vocal cords. If you want to remain very consistent, what you do, you pull your vocal cords, like in a guitar case when you tune, and so they get higher pitches by doing this. They vibrating in a particular situation with the partial vocal cords, like this. This part is numb, is locked. And that's why falsetto voice gives you the possibility to produce higher notes, like in this guitar case, shorter vocal cords. But in order to get the low vocal cords, you have to open the full vocal cords. And that's why the switch will be significant. There will be a break, like in yodeling. Then, when you have this partial vibration, not full vocal cords vibration, but partial vibration, then basically what you do is that you pull like a string, like you tune it. And that's how you produce initial pitches, by tuning them, by strengthening them by pulling them in chest register is the same it just there's no capo in chest register you start with open strings but don't you think that every note is pitched by shortening vocal folds length that would be a register change every time you sing a different note it rather works like a guitar capo changes the bass and establishes the bottom of this particular register. So, how it happens? In passaggio zone, vocal folds want to get shorter to switch into a partial length mode function. That's why they break into a head voice or falsetto. They simply have no strength, no support of continuing with the same full length mode of vocal cords. They need either switch to get shorter or extra support from a diaphragm that can help to get the higher pitches without changing your register as in chiaroscuro way of voice production. Okay, let me show you three types of connection from F sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sharp. Now, I'll show you the connection of So you see the switch is there Again, in this situation, smart singers who are aware of these problems, they try to do it in a tricky way. For example, if they want to sing falsetto on F sharp, what they would do rather, they will not surprise you with singing a falsetto on F sharp. They would rather start singing falsetto on C sharp in this particular case. So instead of doing right, that obvious break. The third way of doing it, if you simply don't support it, you can push it through. Which is a consistent sound, of course, but it's 
damaging your vocal cords. There's so lots of tension and disturbance. Falsetto, chiaroscuro, and forcing scuro. A forcing scuro, you see, you can force your chiaroscuro, but the point of appoggio chiaroscuro is not to force any voice. No matter how big your voice is, you still support it. And I have to tell you, the stronger voice you have, the stronger support you have to have. Let's say if you're really a held in tenor, or you want to be rather held in tenor, and you wanted to get all these high notes fully supported, you have to use a poggio. Otherwise, you'll be screaming out loud on your vocal cords. There's a lot of prejudice and simple ignorance in vocal communities and among vocal teachers. That is explained well why by Jerome Hines, for example, in describing the teacher. One of the categories of the teacher he mentions, those guys who have a great operatic career, they've been stars, later on in their lives they moved to teaching career. Okay? They have no idea how to teach, but they move because they're great singers and every university wants them. And obviously, this type of a teacher has a problem, like Jerome Hines mentioned. We can analyze it and say, what kind of problem as a teacher a great singer may have? First of all, inability or even absence of desire to actually learn how to be a good teacher that's the very first thing, because when a star comes into a master class, the master class is a different thing. Master class, you can be an excellent in master classes, but lousy in regular lessons. Uh, master class is a PR, most of all. It's, uh, it's showing how your school works, you, you, you give them some tricks so that the public can see, oh, okay, oh, that's better, yeah, yeah, wow, you know. But everyday work is something different and of course stars don't like that. Also they don't like to be confronted by questions. If you're a smart student and you disagree with something, do you have the guts to confront this famous name by questioning him? Probably not and if you do, you will not please the big star. That's why it comes the notion that amazing singers cannot teach themselves. Enrico Caruso was self-aware of this and he tried to teach one guy and he admitted that it was a disaster. And he urged big stars and singers do not teach. But in our world, when a big star is retiring, he may or not may afford themselves to leave just, you know, on pension or whatever they, they got from their career. Oh, why not to go to the university and, you know, to have a so-called a sinecure job? Of course, the I mean, it's exaggeration, you still have to work, but you know, there's, you're a celebrity. You're not uh, somebody who has to prove something, you have to raise some student. If you never raised any of the students and never become great singers, your name will be still as whatever, Enrico Caruso. You know, nobody speaks about uh, Enrico Caruso being a lousy teacher. Do you care? Nobody cares. And so that's one of the reasons why majority of celebrity teachers don't teach well. And this is a pity because theoretically the great singer is capable of teaching better than anybody else because he knows his instrument. He knows his instrument, the only thing he doesn't know is how to explain it and how to coordinate it and how to bring those things into other students. He doesn't care about this. He's, his fame has already got him. His uh, ambition is fulfilled. So, I mean, teaching for him is like, okay, okay, I'll teach you, all right, you know. Thank you very much. I hope you understood something about registers and I hope that you shook away your prejudices. If you didn't, I do not necessarily require from you to just believe me. You can check it out. You can check it out by experimenting with yourself or you can read uh, scientific articles about how voice functions. Don't agree with me. I don't have a problem. I know I'm right because I take these notions from my own experience from reading a lot of zillions books that help a little but still gives you the notion and by having many many years of 
teaching career, if you like. Until next time, bye.